Yeah, this is a Ford Econoline 99. So, what, fourth gen? Yeah. Fourth gen Econoline. Uh, charging system problem. Sorry about the crosshairs on the camera. Uh, a welding machine arc fried the actual lens, so it put a permanent mark. I guess, I guess it was, uh, I guess it's time to start experiencing electrical problems. So why are we making this video? Well, we're making this video because we got a jump because we had dead batteries. We had dead batteries because we had a problem with the alternator not charging up to par. Alternator was only charging 13 volts somewhere in that neighborhood and it decided, voltage regulated, would decide to quit when it wanted to. And then when we took it out, we figured out that at one point the alternator was overcharging, so it killed the battery. And then on top of that, when we got a jump, for some reason, the system overcharged. In other words, too much power came in to the vehicle through the leads, I guess maybe combined with the alternator for the length of time that it was running. So, subsequently, we started a bunch of series of electrical problems on a vehicle that's never had any electrical problems like that, ever. So, we wound up in the instrument cluster of all places to document and notate that this is some type of microprocessor right here that is responsible for your, all your instrument, your instrument cluster and all your gauges. Well, turns out ours had a big puff of smoke come out the top of it. We also burned up this Pioneer in the process of trying to jump this vehicle out to get it home in an emergency bond. Um, we lost all gauges. And this is an alternator that's supposed to be, I guess, about a year old, and it's brand new not a reman. So the alternator voltage regulator is probably Chinese and it malfunctioned is my guess. Or maybe two of the windings inside the alternator fused together from heat. Whatever the situation is, it caused serious electrical problems and it even burnt up a spot here. Let me see if I can get this down. Spot here in the instrument cluster, causing us to lose a lot of gauges, all of them actually. Yeah, you can see the solder. And I soldered it back together. That caught on fire and plumed up or just burnt up like a uh, cigarette lighter. And we soldered a lead back and that was our, I think, black and white wire here. That killed the entire instrument cluster. Then we had problems with the lights not working. Then we noticed the alternator wasn't charging at all. We noticed we didn't have a battery light. We lost the battery light, but we got it back. And as soon as we got it back. As soon as we got it back, mm -hmm. subsequently, just like Toyota and some older other vehicles, they use an Excite wire or an Excite light. So the alternator, even though it's broken and it's going back to the auto parts store, would not charge even the, the measly 13 volts after we bought a new battery. So we were wondering, well, now that we burned up our radio, now that we our instrument cluster is not working right, and our gauges weren't, these none of these gauges were registering, none of them. Uh, now we have our oil light. Weren't we supposed to have something up here? Uh, no, we weren't. Okay. And uh, we had no airbag light either. Yeah, we lost an airbag light. Turns out the airbag light and the battery light are on the same fuse. Number 14. Number 14 down in your box below. If you got like an 03 to 97 maybe, some that e year range. Even that year range, but this is a 99. And if you lose the 5 amp fuse between the battery, the battery light and it also controls the idiot light for the like I said, whatchamacallit, the airbag, yeah. the airbag, you're going to lose charge to the alternator altogether. So that's a note to self and a note to YouTube that if you lose that wire uh, or if you lose that light itself or that fuse, you're going to lose. you got no battery light. You've got no alternator. Correct. So you're going to lose the Excite wire to the alternator. 
the excite wire is one of the wires that go into the field. So we didn't have that. So now we finally got some charge out of this alternator, but it sure does whine and make noise. And we got to get it out of here before we burn up uh, the batteries that are in here now because the voltage regulator may just decide all of a sudden it wants to go all Robocop on us or uh, Ed uh, 209 and fry these new batteries that we just put in here about an hour ago. Now we couldn't find hardly anything on the internet and it's so hard to navigate the internet because you got know-it-alls everywhere. So we had to pull this thing apart manually and find out all, all this. So if you're having a problem with your charging system, remember it does route on these models through the idiot light and the fuse box down below. It doesn't say alternator. It just says battery light slash uh, airbag light, airbag yeah. light for, instrument the, cluster. for the instrument cluster. And then also back feeding your system or combining your alternator with someone else's if your alternator is malfunctioning can cause catastrophic problems like we just experienced. This radio is fried, the amplifier in it reads amp error when you turn it up too loud and it makes a funny robot sound through the speaker so it's toast and it's brand new pretty much only a, a year old and then we have this problem that we just fixed so we lost everything before even our alternator from losing that one lead surprisingly this microprocessor right here on the top didn't damage didn't suffer any damage itself I'm surprised that it didn't so it takes torque screws to get that out and you don't want to fool with that if you don't have to but uh, soldering the board so far it looks like we've got all of our gauges back and we probably shouldn't run this shitty alternator too much longer but uh, what else did we blow that 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 overcharge I imagine this would probably happen in a severe electrical storm or a mini EMP. There was an auxiliary probably, horn that also burned up. Yeah, we bu burned up an auxiliary horn. We burned up uh, relays. We burned up quite a few things in this process. All chain reaction. It was a chain reaction, and it throw you for a serious loop. But uh, having a bad alternator can cause a lot of problems. Pause that for a minute. So we got our alternator here. This is our old alternator. We're going to pull this piece of junk off. We're going to bring it back to the auto parts store. You can tell it's not very old. This engine is a, a I got, well, I got other YouTube videos showing where I put this engine in. Uh, this is a used engine with 140 or 130,000 miles on it. And uh, it runs great. It just, uh, that, that, uh, that alternator uh, cause all kind of problems. So that's your excite wire, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's like a, either a field or an excite wire. But if that wire, that small wire right here on the top, is not plugged in for any reason, that wire, also you stop. you'll lose all charge. You won't have any charge. You'll just have 12 volts from your battery until it dies, and then that's that. But I hope this video helps somebody who has electrical problems after a jump start, or has been accidentally struck by lightning or the government bombed you with an EMP bomb uh, testing out Boeing's new EMP uh, or you drove through an apocalypse so you know what to do um, and you're a Econolon hopefully you have mini guns and stuff like that on the roof and everything's fun and you have a fun time going through this this was not fun here in the driveway and uh, we did retrofit a group size 34 battery from Never Start uh, because it was the cheapest. And there, was, there wasn't even our size available. And because there weren't our size available, but we did get a thousand cold cranking amps for 119 bucks and 800, well, 800 cold cranking amps. Uh, yeah, thousand cranking amps. So I can live with that. We got two of these. 34 ends and they happen to fit in the Econolon. Well, the problem is we're a little small on a size. This battery happens to be bigger than the one that we had in here as far as cranking amps go. But anyway, that's not the point. The point of the video is electrical problems suck ass. And sorry about the Robocop uh, 
uh, crosshairs on the camera or the Terminator uh, crosshairs. But um, we are going to hopefully go get an alternator and put this thing back together and be, and be going and go put the instrument cluster back in and all that. And hopefully we don't have any more problems like that. I can't wait to see what else possibly burned up later. So far, no check engine lights through, so wires that go to sensors and certain sensors. Oh, I did. we did blow a fuse to um, the... Um, speed control? Yeah, the... Shift interlock? The, the transmission shift interlock or speed control module. That might have been a bullet we dodged. Yeah, it did blow that fuse, and I don't think it blew the module out because we replaced the fuse, and... All seems to be working without a check engine light, but all, all also happens to run daytime running lamp module if you have it. Yeah, so we didn't test drive this thing down the road yet, but uh, like I said, we got to do a stupid alternator. But anyway, thank y'all for watching.